welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. Thank you so much for joining me. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it is all connected. We also believe that everyone deserves to participate in their own care. And the first and best way to get started is by educating yourself on conditions, on treatments, on things you can do for yourself, ways your doctor thinks about your condition, all of it. And that's what we do here at Connected Rheumatology. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification, hit like, share it with your friends and family, anyone who you think could use this information. So today I want to go over a requested topic, something that I know comes up a lot and can be really confusing and frustrating, especially for those who are kind of trying to figure out if they have rheumatoid arthritis or not. And that is when your rheumatoid factor is positive, but your anti-CCP is negative. So let's get into it. Here's a scenario. You're having some joint pain, maybe some joint swelling. You go and see your doctor and your doctor's like, we need to make sure you don't have rheumatoid arthritis. And so they check a rheumatoid factor. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then make sure you watch the video I've done on rheumatoid factor. I'll put the description down in the link below. So you get the rheumatoid factor tested and it comes back positive and your doctor says, you have rheumatoid arthritis, you need to go see the specialist. And so you do all the research you can. You go and you watch my video and you're taking notes and you're reading everything about it. And you're like, yes, I think this is what I've got and this is what my doctor said I have. And three months later, when you get to see the rheumatologist, they look at you and they're like, hmm, we need more testing. I'm gonna test the anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide or CCP antibody. And the CCP antibody you will have heard of because you will have done your research and you will know that that antibody is much more specific for rheumatoid arthritis than the rheumatoid factor test. So you're like, cool, that's great. You get the test back, you get a call that says the test is negative, the doctor doesn't think you have rheumatoid arthritis, or maybe they don't know, and they're sending you back to your primary care doctor to figure it out. And that's where we get confused and we get angry and we get frustrated. We're like, what in the world is going on? This is unfortunately not uncommon. And so the question really is now what? Now what do we do? What does this mean? Well, the first thing to understand is that just because your anti-CCP antibody is negative does not mean that you don't have rheumatoid arthritis or that rheumatoid arthritis is no longer a consideration. It just means that we need to be extra careful and make sure that we have checked all the other boxes of what could be going on. Because as you know, the rheumatoid factor blood test is not nearly as specific or sensitive for rheumatoid arthritis as we think. I mean, you would think it would be because it has the same name, rheumatoid and rheumatoid, but it actually doesn't. And you know, Years ago, 20, 25 years ago, before testing for the CCP antibody was routine, this scenario would actually just lend itself to someone could have a misdiagnosis of RA for years before their true diagnosis shows, shows itself. Having a CCP antibody be positive is obviously gives us a lot more certainty that we're dealing with rheumatoid arthritis. But having it be negative is also a gift as well because it makes sure that our doctors have gone through every possible other diagnosis and made sure that that isn't happening before going back and landing on that rheumatoid arthritis diagnosis. But what are those other boxes that we need to check off? What are the other things that your doctor is going to be thinking about when trying to figure out if in fact you have rheumatoid arthritis or not? Well, it's really kind of three big categories and that's going to be autoimmunity, infection, and cancer. Now I know what that C word does and I do not bring it up lightly and we're going to talk more about it, but just know that those are the three categories that your doctor is kind of broadly thinking about. Now, autoimmunity, we know 
lupus, Sjogren's, MCTD, scleroderma, all these conditions can have a positive rheumatoid factor and have joint pain. So those will all be circulating through your doctor's mind. Infections, viral infections in particular, and I know we're all sick and tired of talking about and thinking about viral infections, but viral infections and the post-viral syndrome is actually a very common cause of having joint pain and swelling that can look like rheumatoid arthritis. And sometimes that syndrome lasts weeks, months, sometimes even longer. But testing and looking for a previous viral infection is actually really important when looking at someone with a new di with a new arthritis. Other infections like hepatitis, which is also a virus, and even things like tuberculosis. So infections are a big part of what you think about when someone comes to you with arthritis. And then cancer. So let me just say that it is very, very rare for someone to have cancer and the only thing to show up on testing is a rheumatoid factor with some arthritis. That is very rare. I can't even think of, of a situation where that would be common. It is much more common for someone to have a slew of abnormal lab findings and lots of different symptoms, which may include arthritis to then have cancer. That is the much more common scenario. So I don't want anyone freaking out that because they have a rheumatoid factor and arthritis, that cancer is really, really high on the possibilities because it's not. But if we're just gonna group things into big categories, it is one of the categories. Okay, so we've got these big categories. Your doctor, whether or not they communicate with this with you or not, has a running list in their head of number one, two, and three, what they suspect or what they're worried about. And so their testing is going to reflect what that one, two, and three is. And I think it's instructive for us to kind of go through how we as doctors think about and make our list. You know, with medical school and all of our training, we're not simply taught what the possibilities are, but we're taught how to structure our thinking and rank those possibilities. And the way we do that in this particular scenario is by looking at rheumatoid factor and the arthritis, and of course, any other signs or symptoms that might be going on. But let's just keep it simple and keep it to those two. So we're looking at how high or low the rheumatoid factor result is and how mild or severe the arthritis is. So let's do some examples. So let's say someone has a really high rheumatoid factor and they have some arthritis, but quite honestly, it's really not that impressive. And they say, well, it comes and goes occasionally, like I haven't needed an ibuprofen and I don't know how long, and it's really just like a wrist and a finger, like that's it. And it's really kind of like, it, it's not a, it doesn't match up. Like the rheumatoid factor is through the roof and the arthritis is like forgettable. Well, they're gonna shape their list based on that. And just off the top of my head, that would be, you might put something like Sjogren's at the top of that list. You might put something like lupus at the top of that list. Something like cancer is going to be eh, middle of the list and TB, not TB, sorry, infections, again, middle of the list, but lower. So you make your list based on those factors. Another example is, say you have very severe arthritis, multiple joints, can barely walk, have needed a lot of prednisone just to get you functional, and your rheumatoid factor is really kind of not that impressive. So in that case, your list is gonna be different. Maybe viral infection is gonna be higher on that list. You're going to look for other types of infections. Autoimmunity is there, cancer is there, but it's gonna be lower. So you can see how we make these lists in our head 
based not just on the presence of factors, but on the severity of those factors. And we put that in context of the entire individual. You know, do they have anything else going on? What is in their family history? So yes, we've got these three big categories that we think about, but we also rank them based on a lot of different factors. And this is what's going on in your doctor's head when they're trying to figure out what you have. And by the way, it doesn't have to stay in their head. You can ask them when they come to you and they're like, well, I'm not quite sure we need more testing because that's what this is gonna lead. Like basically this entire video, the point is, if this is the situation you find yourself in, you're going to need more testing. <laughs> Rheumatologists always just do more testing. But you can actually ask the doctor, I understand we need more testing. May I ask, what is your number one, two, and three diagnosis in your head that we're testing for? Like, what are you most concerned about? Just so that you have an idea what their thinking is. Because there is a list. There should be a list. Okay, so that's how we kind of think through and make sure that we've checked all the boxes and that, in fact, we are making sure that there's nothing else aside from rheumatoid arthritis that, become, that could be going on. So you do all this testing and let's say something pops up positive, something unexpected, something not rheumatoid arthritis related. So you simply shift gears and you now are going down that road. But let's say you do all the testing and it's negative and everything seems to be ruled out. Well, then you most likely have rheumatoid arthritis. You can certainly have rheumatoid arthritis with a negative CCP. All right, so that was just some clarification on kind of next steps if you find yourself in a situation where a rheumatoid factor is positive but the CCP is negative and you're getting told you do or then maybe you don't and you don't know what to do next or what in the world your doctor is thinking, then I hope this provides a little clarity and shines a light that there is um, some, what's that phrase? Um, oh, there is a method to the madness. That's what I was trying to say. There is usually some method to the madness and that, um, that there, there is a path forward. That this doesn't, it's not just like a continuous loop of like nobody knows what's going on. Um, if you like this video, please hit subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know whenever new videos drop, although I'll tell you they drop once a week. I don't have time to do um, surprise videos, although I would love to, but just not yet. Um, and make sure you like this video and share it with anyone you think could use it. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it is all connected. Thanks and have a great day.